I'd never use cube money because I love getting credit card points. This is one of the number one responses I hear when I tell people about cube money, but does it make sense? We're going to break it down in this video. I'm Chelsea Brennan from Smart Money Mamas, where we help women build positive relationships with money so they can build lasting generational wealth and live their best lives. This video is sponsored by Cube Money, a digital banking and budgeting solution that lets you be intentional with your money so you can reach your goals. You can try two free months of Cube Premium with the code MONEYMAMA at the link in the description. Be sure to try it out and see how much more control you feel over your budget. Now, let's talk about credit cards versus Cube, because this is a big question. I want to start with number one. Are credit card points worth it? Does it make sense to not switch to Cube so you don't lose that credit card points? Research would suggest no, it really, really doesn't. There have been many, many studies done about how people spend money on credit cards versus with debit cards in cash. Because even if you pay your credit card off in full every month, which is fantastic, even if you do that, you are still borrowing money. You're buying something now and not paying until the end of the month. So while you're only budgeting for a short term and you're not paying interest, it doesn't have the same psychological impact as when you're using cash you actually have in hand today. And what that means over many, many studies is that we spend more money with our credit cards. So what are credit card points really worth? On average, a credit card point is worth between one and three cents. When we look at a 5% cash back reward, that's really the highest that we see, okay? So you're getting 5% cash back. But research is suggesting that you're spending way more than 5% more when you use your credit card. A commonly cited study by Dun & Bradstreet showed that on average, people spend 12 to 18% more on a transaction when they're spending with a credit card versus when they're spending with a debit card or cash. And that's the lowest we see in the differential between credit cards and debit cards. 12 to 18 percent. So assuming at best you're getting five percent back by choosing to use something like Cube where you're spending with a debit card and having to be intentional with the dollars that you're spending, you will actually have more money to do with what you want to go on vacation, to have those special trips. You'll be able to do that because you'll be spending 12 to 18 percent less. Yes, maybe you lose that up to five percent credit card reward, but you still have seven to 10% more money in the bank. And so this is lets you be intentional and aligned with your money. But like I said, that done in Bad Street study is the lowest differential we see between what research shows we spend on a credit card versus a debit card. Research by the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston found that transactions were 407% higher on credit cards versus debit cards in cash. Now, for the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston study, do we think that that big difference, that 407% difference, is partially because we make big expenses on credit cards, things like travel and vacations, that we wouldn't necessarily spend with cash on a debit card. Yes, that is part of it. But research has suggested that we do more impulse spending and we're ready to spend more money on what we perceive as a deal with a credit card versus a debit card. A study by MIT showed that people will spend as much as 100% more on an expense that is short-term limited, something like a deal on concert tickets, than they would with a debit card or cash. And so credit cards are very smart, right? These credit card companies aren't offering you bonuses so that they can make less money. That's never been their business transaction. The goal is to incentivize you, to give you one more reason to spend money instead of not spending money. So overall, we think by using Cube, you'll actually have more money available to do the things that matter most to you, to travel, to do fun things with your family, if you use Cube than if you use a credit card and are overspending on things that don't matter to you every single day. The second point that comes up when we talk about credit cards versus Cube is security, right? Most credit cards have 0% liability protection. And we think about identity theft and the risk of our cards being spent down. Often this is a big concern with cash or debit cards, right, is theft. But with Cube, because of the way the card works, the card naturally has a $0 balance. And unless you have opened one of the Cubes in the app, someone can't spend with your card. So even if someone stole your card number, they can't actually run down your account. There's nothing you can do with it. Simply, you order a new card and you move forward. So fraud protection isn't as big of an issue with Cube as it would be with another type of debit card. It's one of the reasons I love Cube. Believe it or not, my husband has already lost his cube card twice. I'm not quite sure what he's done. He's never lost a credit card before, but he's lost his cube card twice. Both times, there was no issue. Nobody was able to spend on that card. He got a new card within a couple days, and we just carried on with our lives. Now, the third point when we talk about credit cards versus cube is payment protection and insurance opportunities. Some credit cards do offer certain bonuses, things like rental car insurance and 
travel protection and travel insurance. And in those cases, it might make more sense to use a credit card for a big expense, extended warranties for certain large purchases. So when you're buying a washing machine or you're booking flights, it might make more sense to do it with your credit card. Take the points in that instance, be very intentional with what you're spending on your travel, but take advantage of those benefits. Something like Cube or any debit card or cash is not gonna have those options and you would have to pay extra for them. If you think you don't actually need extended warranty, you don't actually need that travel protection, that's a different conversation. But there is a point when you're booking a big trip and the credit card that you could spend it on does offer free travel insurance or extra checked bags or things like that where it would make more sense to use a credit card. But for 95% of my regular expenses, I do everything on Cube. And finally, the fourth point, what gives you more control? When we think about our budget, when we think about aligning our money with our own unique goals and values, which option, spending on a credit card or spending on your cube card, really helps you do that most effectively? Where are you spending your money where it matters? And I think cube, where you have to open the app, select your cube, and really make conscious decisions about your spending in the moment and only spend money you already have, is going to let you better align your money with those big goals. Credit card companies, like I said, are smart. They have huge marketing teams, huge marketing budgets designed to play on our impulse spending, to play on our emotional spending needs so that we do spend more money with them. And so with Cube, you get to be more intentional. Yes, maybe you give up those credit card points, but you get more of your own money back, which is so much more powerful. So even if you love your credit card rewards, I'm going to give you a challenge. Download the Cube Money app in the description of this video. If you want to use a joint account or have unlimited cubes, use the code MONEYMAMA for two free months of premium. Pick a couple of spending categories that you spend on a regular basis and test Cube for one month, two if you'd really like to, and see how your spending differs now versus when you use a credit card. Because even if you're paying your credit cards off in full each month, I'm willing to bet that you're spending more than you would with your Cube card and that you'll have more money left over at the end of that month to do with what you want. Be sure to comment below this video and share your biggest concern about switching from using credit cards to Cube, and I wanna answer your questions. I wanna help you be more intentional with your money. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so you get notified each time we release a new video to help you build a positive relationship with wealth. I'll see you next time.